Hey, this is Robbie from Believe in the Run. Bonjour, this is Carl from Believe wow. in the Run. We're fancy pants over here. All right, I guess if you speak another language, that's fancy to me. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're here today to talk about the Veja Condor 3. Not the Veja Condor 3 or Veja Condor 3, Veja. Veja. I thought yeah. it was Veja, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a common misconception for those, for the less educated among us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're here to talk about the shoe. This is a running shoe from, again, Veja, French brand uh, that's, that's got my parasite on. Just thought, throw that in, throw that out there. Fancy but, over here but, now. Yeah, right? a little bit. Olympics 2024 coming up. Anyways, they're a French brand, lifestyle brand. Carl, have you seen them out in public before? No, I actually haven't. And the first like interaction that I had with them was at the running event. They were one of the last okay. people that we saw after a very long trip. <laughs> yeah, the reason you probably haven't seen them is because you don't have kids. And when you show up to bring your kids to school, you see a lot of moms wearing, maybe not a lot, but definitely a handful wearing the Veja shoe. It's kind of a status symbol. You might have seen the white patent le they're not leather but they look like leather mm. uh shoes on the feet of yeah some moms cool people movie stars and whatnot very cool you'll, it'll be like when you get a new car yeah and then you see that car everywhere you'll start seeing them everywhere. i guess i don't have that status because i've never <laughs> seen anyone wear the shoes so yeah anyways we're excited to talk about the shoe because we had, we've tested some of the Veja shoes in the past, namely the Condor 1. I think we skipped the 2, and honestly, it was very unimpressed with it. It was just a very firm and unforgiving shoe. We didn't even review it because it was so bad. We just sent them internal feedback. So I wasn't super excited to run in the shoe, but then we got it, and we tried it on at the running event. Did you try it on? When we I there? didn't, but I know okay. Thomas did, and you did, yeah. And I was surprised at how good it felt on our foot just walking around with it. So I was excited to get this on our feet to actually test in and run in. First, I want to give just a little bit of backstory on Veja, because mm -hmm. I think it's important for this review. I do too. Yeah. So they're a very sustainable brand in the way that sustainability should be. You hear that a lot from brands, whether it's Allbirds or any major brand. It's the, everyone is doing the sustainability thing, whether it's recycling right. or reusing or saying it's biodegradable midsoles. Veja is the one brand that actually kind of does it through the entire cycle of the shoe. So they source and manufacture all their materials from either Brazil or Peru. They have their factories are like very well run. Their workers are very well paid. They're guaranteed housing and uh, yeah, good pay and uh, unionizing if they need want to. So it's like the really the entire cycle of the shoe and the materials are it, they're in that sustainable and ethical practice. And they're very conscious about that. They don't spend any money on advertising or marketing. They just kind of build what they want at their own pace and in a way that's, uh, yeah, good for everyone. And so I think that's, as you'll see in this review, that lends to a higher price tag for their product. But when you are looking to spend money on a shoe that actually means something that has good ethical practices and standards, you can know that you're spending it on that. So I think that is important to going into the shoe. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so let's get into what this shoe's all about. Uh, Carl, do you want to start with maybe the upper? Yeah, so with the upper and just in general, um, maybe we should start with sizing because I think that's going to dictate yeah, a little, a little bit sure. of how okay. I review Yeah, let's go with it. So I'm normally a uh, U.S. men's 10 and a half. Um, that's the size that I got. Upon putting it on for the first time, I did notice it was pretty roomy. Not horribly roomy or anything like that. It, it still felt good. I just felt like just the shoe itself is a wide platform. Um, and I just noticed at least the first couple of runs that I did in it. I do this thing with my toes where if a shoe's a little too big, I tend to grip. Oh, yeah. You know that? Like, especially yeah. if you're wearing thin socks. Like, I noticed that I was doing that in this shoe a little bit. Yeah. So. I mean, I got a pair of these. My initial pair in these, same, same problem. It was definitely too big. Uh, I got a replacement pair that went a half size down and that fit perfectly. So I think it would have behooved you if you did have a size 10, 10 but yeah. you know, we, we got to roll what we got. Yeah, exactly. We Not gotta roll what here. we got what we, with what we got. So forgot a word there. Anyways. I think that's it. <laughs> okay. That's it. 
So yeah, I would say just make sure your sizing is correct when you're picking up the shoe. Uh, I so I actually felt that it fit really well because I did go a half size down. Mm -hmm. I really liked the lockdown and overall fit of the shoe. I love the design how it incorporates these overlays so it adds some structure but also looks good and yeah. looks looks different. Yeah, no, than, absolutely. Than most running shoes out there. I had a black and white version of this shoe that I think is a little more, more cleaner, but I do like this design as well. I do too. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think the shoe looks really good. Um, you're right. I like that the overlays do add some structure. I'm feeling it now. I thought the lockdown was pretty good, even though it was a little baggy on me, like I said, it did feel like I, I was able to get a good lockdown. Yeah, and it has a flat lay tongue. It's kind of a booty style in, in the inside. So it has this outer layer of mesh and then you got a booty that goes from like halfway in the midfoot the whole way down. Yeah. Um, and then you have these alpha fly style laces. I call them sawtooth laces. I don't know if that's the actual term, but. I like them. Yeah, we've seen they're that great. more in daily trainers or regular running shoes now. And they're really one of the best laces. Pretty simple, but uh, stay tied together. Just kind of disappear on the foot. Yeah, absolutely. You have this, ex this heel counter that extends a little bit, but I didn't find any heel slippage or anything like that. Yeah, no, me neither. So. And there's also this uh, support piece here that gives you a little bit of added structure in the heel. So yeah. overall, I thought it was a really good fit. Uh, let's move on to the midsole. Yeah, so something interesting about this midsole that um, you might want to talk about because you seem to know more about it. But uh, sure. yeah, what, what, what's the, what's the yeah, composition here? So the, again, their whole thing is like biodegradable, recyclable materials, stuff like that. So the midsole is 43% biodegradable sugarcane material, and which is... In the past, I feel like sometimes you get that and it's like, if it leans too far, it's like 50, 55% sugar cane, you're getting a little too much, a little too firm. So it's blended with that and with a Amazonian rubber. And then as well as, I, I'm assuming, I believe it's just regular EVA, but mm -hmm. it's a softer durometer of EVA and the sugar cane combined. So you get a pretty nice, soft and comfortable ride. When I did my first run in these, I was running on very tired legs. Uh -huh. I remember telling you, and I was like, man, these kind of feel like, you know, a slog to get there, just mainly because of the sizing thing and whatnot. Um, but I remember you described it to me as like a premium version Pegasus. Uh, yeah, maybe, I would say maybe a step above a Pegasus. It's, it's very similar, I feel like, as far as the ride. Uh, maybe a little bit softer. Yeah, I was gonna say, it okay. does feel a little bit softer than the peg. But a nice ride overall, I felt like, yeah, there is some issues with maybe, I can understand why your legs would feel dead. We can might as well get into the, or your legs were feeling dead, but might've felt a little heavy. Yeah, the I'm, weight. Should get into the weight. Yeah, for men's 10 and a half, which is my size, it's 12.2 ounces or 347 grams, which may actually be the heaviest running shoe that I've actually ran it's in definitely, so far. It's definitely competing for the throne with like old school ultra boosts and uh, honestly some trail shoes out there. I checked back with some of the other reviews of some of the heaviest shoes that we've reviewed, even that Adidas Adistar, it was still lighter than this. So yeah, it's definitely on the heavy end. I was actually surprised because I don't like to weigh the shoes before I run in them. And I didn't feel like it was that heavy on the run. Um, I don't know. It it wasn't, yeah. yeah. Well, that's funny because I also didn't weigh the shoe before I ran in it. Um, and I was just <laughs> yeah. immediately like, this is a heavy shoe. Like, I don't know what it is, but this maybe feels was, heavy. Maybe I was having a good week. Maybe you were, yeah. Anyways, but, so it is heavy for sure. But I do feel like this falls into that lifestyle shoe that can be worn as a runner. Like, I'm not gonna tell anyone this is a performance shoe that you wear for 20 mile long runs, you right. know? Yeah. Uh, I think this is that they wanted to make a running shoe for their customer base. In that goal, I think they really achieved that. Um, but before I sum up everything, let's one more thing I wanted to mention was the outsole. Yes. It's made of Amazonian rubber that they, again, they source uh, right in Brazil. It's a generous layer of rubber. So I have no doubts that this is going to last, whether it's for walking or for running. Yeah. I think it, you're going to get a lot of life out of that. I agree. I did do one run in the rain and it was fine for me. I didn't have any issues. Same. Yeah. The grip's pretty solid, all yeah. things considered. I felt like this was a very uh, surprising shoe for sure. One of my favorite categories in running shoes is that crossover lifestyle running shoe 
like Deodora or Norda, or you can wear it with anything. It looks awesome, looks great, looks different. You're not gonna see it on the feet of too many people. But then if you wanna go for a five mile run, three mile run, if you're on vacation, you wanna take one shoe on a business trip, the, uh, you, can, you have that shoe that can do everything. And there's a lot of shoes in the past that I've tried to do that and failed. I feel like this is a very good version of that kind of shoe. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, even though my first couple of runs, I was a little hesitant, um, but the more I ran in it, and also I have worn this shoe like almost every day since I've gotten it. Yeah. Like not running in it, just wearing it in the office, going out, and I have received compliments from strangers nice. at, in public about the shoes. So. I will say that's the other thing is that, uh, I mean, you see me too, For probably for the last month, I've worn this shoe almost every day or every other day. Yeah. And it's really one of the most comfortable shoes yeah. I think I own. I just, I don't know, I love this shoe. I love the way it looks, I love the way it feels. I like that you can run in it, you can walk in it, you can just, it's just a really nice shoe. Do you wanna summarize it here with the with the lights or? Yeah, well, let's say the price first because we didn't do that. That's also That's true. also, a, that's a big thing. Okay. So there's the weight and there's the price. This is a $200 shoe. That's a lot. If you're familiar with the brand, it's not surprising that it costs that much. Again, I laid out the reasons why it does. If there's any justification for a $200 shoe, it's that you're buying into a brand that is consciously uh, thinking about each step of the production process and doing it in a way that's diff really it truly is different from any other brand, which is I think meaningful and should be commended. So whether or not you want to spend $200 on it, I'm not going to judge you. If you think it's not worth it, that's fine too. Uh, but I think if that's important to you, then you know that it's going to cost more. And I think it's in that price range and you're getting a good return on the product for what you're paying. I'm going to give this a green. There we go. Yeah, and I'm also going to give this a green. Um, yeah. Despite the sizing issues that I had and the weight, um, Robbie's right in the way, and I agree with just the sentiment of the company and just the way that it's run. I think if you are going to sink $200 into the shoe, you do have a shoe that you can wear casually. You can take it out on runs. It will definitely perform there. And it's definitely, it seems like it's going to last a long time. So yeah, I think this is one of my favorite shoes just overall uh, of this year. Now, again, I want to not perform, I'm not talking about doing tempo runs, doing whatever, yeah. just a shoe that I love. This is one of my favorite shoes. Hopefully, if you like this review, please uh, yeah, like it, subscribe to this channel, and check out our other stuff in the description. We got a podcast, The Drop, a Fuel for the Soul. I'll sign up for our weekly email, where you'll get all our reviews in one place. And what else am I forgetting? Obviously, they follow us on all, all of our social channels. Yeah. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and we'll do our best to get back to you. We will try. All right. Thanks for watching.